Okay. Now, this graph is regarding the effect we will study the property, property of refractive period of frog's cardiac muscle. So, before taking and uh, looking at the graph, first of let us talk about this one, the cardiac muscle refractive period. If we compare like in the previous graphs in the case of the skeletal muscle, I have also discussed about this one. The refractive period in the case of the cardiac muscle is lasting longer as compared to the refractive period in the case of the skeletal muscle, right. The mechanical event and the electrical event we have discussed, if you can recall back or you can go back to those graphs of the skeletal muscle where I have explained this in detail. So, just a brief look over here, this is the electrical event happening in the cardiac muscle and this is the mechanical. So, if we look over here, the mechanical event almost entirely covers it is superimposed the electrical as well as the mechanical event. So, the contraction phase part and initial one third of the relaxation phase that is the absolute refractive period and if we look at this electrical event happening, it is almost covering the th phase 3 right and the remaining refractive period that is the relative refractive period that is covering the phase 3 as well as the like the last part of the phase 3 and the phase 4. So, we can easily say that absolute refractive period will be present in ventricle systole as well as early part of the diastole, but in the late part of the diastole still refractive period is there, but that is the relative refractive period. And what happens in the relative refractive period? In the case of the absolute refractive period, if you provide any strong stimulus that muscle will not respond, it may be of any strength, but in the case of the relative refractive period, if we provide a stimulus that is strong enough to generate the impulse, it can produce the impulse, right. So, that is the relative refractive period. Now, coming to the graph. Now, look at this graph. This is a very good graph showing the effect of property of refractive period in cardiac muscle. First of all, this is on the student physiograph. So, in this case, if you look over here, this is ventricular systole or ventricle systole and A, the downstroke is ventricular diastole. Now, the smaller one, this is atrial systole upstroke and downstroke is atrial diastole. Okay. So, D is atrial diastole, C is atrial systole, B is ventricular systole, A is ventricle diastole. That is the normal one. Now, see, you will get the graph like say this marking, Th there will be one marking over here and then one marking over here. It means this marking shows we have provided a stimulus. So, initially as we can see over here, it is written, but it you might not get the written thing over here you have to make it like where in which phase of the cardiac cycle we are providing the stimulus. For, for that you need to know which one is systole and which one is diastole and which one is for the ventricle or the atrial. So, we are providing the stimulus in ventricular diastole or systole. So, in this one stimulus during the diastole, how do you know this is during the diastole? Diastole is the downstroke, right? Diastole is the downstroke. So, if we uh, like say draw a line over here, draw a line over here, this is falling at the down this one diastole phase right down stroke. So, we are providing the stimulus at the diastole and the second stimulus is we are providing the stimulus during systole. Systole means upstroke. If we draw a line over here, it is falling at upstroke part. So, first we will discuss about this one. Can you see any change before the application of the stimulus and after the application of the stimulus? <coughs> see, only this graph, this one has got more height as compared to the three preceding one and three afterwards. Why there is increase in the height? That might be due to you are providing the stimulus. A slight that fluctuation might be there. That is not the result of the effect of the stimulus generated on the cardiac muscle. So, after and before, we compare after and before. After and before, if we look at these things, there is not much of the difference. It means, if we provide the stimulus during the systole, there is no effect seen, no effect seen 
Why there is no effect seen? Because it is the stimulus, external stimulus we are providing, it is falling during the absolute refractive period. Now, look at this point. Before and afterwards, obviously, there is some difference. And what is that difference? We provided the stimulus. Let me do this thing. this one. We provided the stimulus at this point during the diastole. Ideally, if we have not provided the stimulus, what was supposed to happen? It was supposed to go like this way, then the second contraction was supposed to come over here, then the third one. I am not uh, counting the atrial one, I am just going for the ventricle one. It will go downward, then there will be second then there will be third one right but we have provided the stimulus we have provided the stimulus during the diastole means this is the external stimulus provided before the natural stimulus comes so natural stimulus is supposed to come at this point and what is happening at this point this is in absolute see let me draw here this is the ventricle. Forget about the atrial. We are talking about the ventricle. Otherwise, it will become more complicated. So, ventricle, systole. This is the diastole. Okay. Then it was supposed to go down. Then ventricle, systole, ventricle, diastole, ventricle, systole, ventricle, diastole. Okay. Now, we have provided the external stimulus over here. This point. I'll change the color. Okay. This point. So, instead of going this one, it has going upward. Okay. So, at this point, when the natural impulse come. In which phase this ventricle muscle is? In the systole, absolute refractive period, right? So, there won't be any effect, there won't be any effect of the natural impulse. Natural impulse is coming at regular interval, right? At regular interval. But this the very next natural impulse won't generate any contraction in the ventricle. Whatever the contraction is happened, that has happened due to this external stimulus. Now, the second natural impulse will come at this point. This is the first natural impulse this is second natural impulse second natural impulse and this was let me change the color this was our external stimulus right external stimulus now look at this thing mm, one sec let me change the color to that one okay so we provided the external stimulus over here it generated this impulse natural impulse came it won't generate any further so it will come downward it will come downward and at this point of the time there is no impulse so it will be kind of a pause stoppage until the second impulse comes until the second impulse comes right so there are two things you should remember one is extra systole this systole was this was the first systole this was supposed to be diastole but instead of the diastole, we provided the external stimulus, this extra systole happened. So, one term is extra systole. Now, this at the peak of the extra systole, the second, the first natural impulse is coming, the next natural impulse that is getting generated by the pacemaker. But at this point of the time, due to the external sub stimulus application, our ventricles are in absolute refractive period. So, they will not respond to the natural impulse. So, it will relax and it will wait until the second natural impulse comes because the external stimulus is just one stimulus we have provided. So, this entire second cycle will be missed, right? That was supposed to happen this yellow one, this yellow one. So, that is called as compensatory pose, compensatory pose and the duration of the compensatory pose will be equal to one cardiac cycle. Why that compensatory pose happened? Because of the extra systole generated by the external stimulus. So, external stimulus results into generation of the extra systole and that extra systole will be followed by compensatory pose and the duration of this entire thing will be equal to one complete cardiac cycle. Now, the next impulse comes again, again it comes back to the normal situation. So, let us look over here. If we remove this ink, see it is going upward then it goes downward then there is a kind of a pause over here this is atrial impulse ventricle is missed because we are 
looking at the ventricle right. So, ventricle is missed atrial will be there and then again the ventricle comes. So, this duration is equal to one complete cycle. So, this is compensative pause, this is extra systole. I hope it is clear now. So, if you provide during systole, there is no effect or no change seen, but if you provide it during the diastole or the late diastole, not even in the early diastole, late diastole, then it is in the absolute refractive period kind of and we have provided the strong enough stimulus which resulted into the extra systole. Now, you what kind of the questions you can get? You can get the kind of question, let me see. A refractive period, define the refractive period, what are the types of the refractive period, how it is different, refractive period in the cardiac muscle is different from the skeletal muscle and what is the reason for the absolute refractive period, the normal duration of the ref refractive period. Okay. So, all these things and is it uh, beneficial for the cardiac muscle to have longer refractive period? Yes, because they cannot get tetanized like the skeletal muscle due to this refractive period property right ok. So, what is compensative pose, what is extra systole that is all you can get in this one.